Hello everyone, Andy Breeding here. Uh, reading is fundamental and, you know, of course, visual novels are all about reading for the most part. Uh, with this uh, latest, I can't even, the reason why I'm laughing is because it's so hard for me to pronounce it. I'm looking at a screen right now and I, I think this is how you pronounce it. It's uh, Yutarare Rom, oh no, that sounds really bad. Yutarare Rom, oh no, whatever. Uh, <laughs> It starts with a U. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. I am terrible. At it's a really hard name for me to pronounce. But anyway, they came out with a couple of games uh, earlier this year. There was uh, Mask of Deception. And then very recently, there's Mask of Truth. Although each of the games are visual novels, they do put a neat twist in when putting in tactical RPG turn-based you know, combat that reminds me of the Final Fantasy Tactics games. And, and it's it's quite surprising that a visual novel has something else to do besides reading it. Finding this concept intriguing enough, I went to the publisher saying, hey, can you maybe send a code my way so I can kind of check this out? I, I really would like to make a video on this. And they were like, yeah, sure, here you go, here's a code. So getting a code from the publishers, I dived in and this is what I found fun and frustrating with, oh boy, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but we're not gonna, this is what I found fun and frustrating with Mask of Truth. Mask of Truth's story is intriguing enough to pull you into the world of Yamato. From the mystery of the man behind the mask, the pressure of keeping up appearances to hide the truth from the closest people in your life, restoring order to the chaos in the land of Yamato, you'll want to see everything through the end to find out the fate of each individual. I couldn't help but be entranced by every character's development as the story went on. Some with their own problems aside from the main story that drives the Mask of Truth along, it's never a bad thing to make us care about more than just the main character of a game. Audio played a big part of my enjoyment in Mask of Truth, with the big part being the background noise and music. Early on in the Mask of Truth, I was at a menu screen that I could either continue the story or do other things before advancing the story. In the background, there were birds chirping and singing, and I decided this is a good time as any to go make a cup of coffee. As I did, my girlfriend yelled from the other room that she wants to kill them damn birds outside the window making all the racket. She was dumbfounded that the noise was actually coming from the game itself. There's also little attention to the details such as echoes in the voice audio when characters are in areas that you would normally assume echo to be present in when speaking. The combat is not terribly hard in Mask of Truth, but for the rare times that you lose this battle in the main story, you could either restart the encounter like most turn-based combat games provide, or you could do what I really like, which is rewind. When rewinding the battle, you can scroll through the turns you went through and pick a spot that might have been the mistake that sealed your fate in the loss. Being able to go over in your choices and decide that maybe on turn 30, you should have moved away and healed instead of tried for that critical hit is the kind of satisfaction I wish more turn-based games would incorporate into their design. The pacing of Mask of Truth is a little off kilter. Loading what seems like hours of story before seeing any battles is rough on the patience level with most people. Although I didn't have a patience issue, I did have the issue of getting sleepy while reading all the dialogue for an extended period of time. Not to say Mask of Truth was boring, it's far from it. In general, I get sleepy after long periods of reading text. It's just one of the main reasons why I read before bed. It works as a natural sleep aid for me. If the story was broken up with more combat or something to give the player more interaction to change things up just a little bit, it would have been a more enjoyable experience. I know this is going to come off as a it's just you kind of frustrating thing, but for what possible reason does the gameplay recording is blocked feature need to be on for when I'm trying to save my game in Mask of Truth? I can understand if it's a crucial part in the story that you don't want people to screenshot or record, which, by the way, is easily bypassed with capture cards that a lot of people are using in lieu of streaming or recording directly from the game consoles, no matter what, the feature will bother me, especially if you put it in when I try to save my game. Yeah, so there's not that much frustrating with the actual game itself, other than you might want to be prepared to spend a long time reading dialogue between a bunch of characters, switching to another scene, reading a bunch of characters, reading, and then finally getting to some combat and... Yet yeah, the pacing could have been better. It really could have. But that still didn't hinder my fun with the game itself. Being able to just immerse myself in the world of I forget, Yamato, 
I, I believe that's the name of the the country that all this most or most of this takes place in uh the characters i loved them each and every one of them felt like I, I knew them enough like the story was told enough from each person's perspective to get a feeling of each character and being attached to said characters it's also not hard to get into if you like didn't play mask of deception or if you've never even heard of this series to begin with uh, there's anime and and stuff out there for the series and you could just play mask of truth and it tells a good enough backstory for you to get uh enough to where you feel okay with the game and, and like all right i know what's going on i know what happened and why this is i know the setup and i know all this going in it makes sense to me but if you have a chance to go play mask of deception first because it'll give you mu that much more depth for all the characters that are involved and and it just it's it's i think it's worth your time um but if you don't feel like sitting through like 40 to 80 hours of story and you know some combat go watch the anime actually of uh, uh mask of deception um i forget the name of it because it's also an, it's oh man it's like another off name kind of thing but it was it's on crunchyroll and you can sign up for a free trial of uh, crunchyroll this is not an ad for crunchyroll but sign up for a free two-week trial watch that anime it's like 23 episodes and it was surprisingly good like i really dug it uh, i was watching it out in the living room my girlfriend was like hey this is actually not that bad and that gives you an even greater sense uh, of the characters their their emotions and how their their tendencies are more so than text can really give you and if anything i suggest going that route and and watching the anime for mask of deception going into this game and then you'll understand the characters more and then you're like you're like oh yeah that's that guy and that's this person and that's that person and this person's funny and and the best thing of all is like a lot of people think visual novels have this uh tendency to put a ton of fan service in i'm happy to say that this game has very little fan service if any at all and i appreciate that because it, it's having too much fan service in your game just kind of turns people off like new people from trying out your genre of visual novels so like you want more people to check your games out and, and check out this genre in general to to appreciate what this medium has to offer but you know putting too much fan service turns people off because then it's like i don't i don't want to see that stuff i can that that's, that's not for me and thankfully mask of truth and supposedly mask of deception which i didn't play um doesn't have a ton of fan service in it there is some little you know adult humor here and there but it's it's more subtle in a way that i i can appreciate so if you don't mind sitting through a bunch of story playing a little bit of combat that seems kind of easy for the most part uh, I really, really suggest picking up Mask of Truth, playing it. Um, more than likely, you should probably play it on the Vita if you do a lot of trans, you know, going here, going there, going to like, you know, taking a train, taking a bus, you know, commuting and whatnot. I would say play it on the Vita. It feels like it would feel more at home on the Vita than anything because, you know, it's that kind of game that takes forever and you have a lot of stuff to read. So Vita, taking it wherever you go. And plus, we all want, like, Come on, you, we all know we have that Vita collecting dust in the closet. You might as well just get this game for the Vita. And if you have, you know, if you feel like buying it on PS4 to play it at home, it's cross save. Uh, I kind of wish it was cross play, but it's cross save. So you can play it on PS4 if you want to. Um, either way, it's fine. But I do suggest that if you travel a lot, this is a really good Vita game. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will talk to everyone soon. Bye.